Hello, uh, in this video we're going to look at modes of convergence, but it's going to be the first video in a little mini-series that I'm calling Basic Limit Theorems. And so here we're going to look at uh, four different types of convergence. Uh, it's basically going to give the definitions of each of them, and then in the following videos we will make use of them, we'll give examples, we'll prove them, and etc. So hope you enjoy it. So the first, uh, let's let uh, xn be a sequence of random variables and let x be a random variable defined on the probability space here where this is the sample space, this is the probability of each of the outcomes of the sample space and this is, a, it's called a sigma field but it's really a way to, uh, you know, how can we combine these elements of the sample space into events you know, can we add them and subtract them and take unions and intersections? This is what this is defined, you know, helps us uh, deal with. Um, and so a random variable is simply just, you know, it's a function from this sample space, sample probability space, to the real numbers, you know, and then there's a Borel sigma field associated with it. Um, so here it could be roll a die. Well, roll a die, an observed outcome, is not numeric. You know, if we say observe a 1, you know, that's not numeric. So we use this random variable and take that and map it to, say, number 1. You know, and that's just one example. But X takes the sample space, maps it to the real numbers. So now let's start looking at some definitions. Now, these, the first two, convergence almost surely, or convergence with probability 1, it's the same thing, okay? And there's really three ways to write it. We can say xn converges almost surely to x. We can just say xn converges to x, and then, but then you have to say with probability 1. Or you can put it in a probability notation. The probability that x converges to x equals 1. So, this, you know, it's a probability that it converges to 1. So, this is if... Um, if xn converges to x, and this is for every element in our sample space, except for probably, you know, a subset that has probability zero. Um, thus, every epsilon greater than zero, and uh, for all s in uh, the in complement, so, it, you know, that's not a probability of one of, of, of happening, there exists an n, which is a function of our epsilon that we picked, and of course, the elements in our sample space, so this n is greater than zero, such that this difference between our uh, sequence of random variables and x is less than epsilon. And this is for all n greater than this uh, capital N. Okay, so that's uh, what we call convergence almost surely, or convergence with probability 1. So now let's look at the second type of convergence. And it converges in probability. And we write it as xn, it goes to x, and you put a little p there, converges in probability. And this is if there's, for every epsilon greater than zero, the probability that this difference is, you know, greater than epsilon goes to zero. So that says as n gets bigger and bigger, these two get closer and closer. And so that says it converges in probability. And thus, uh, for for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n, which is you know can be a function of this epsilon, such that uh, the probability of this difference is greater than zero is less than epsilon. Um, and this is true for every epsilon, and uh, and for all n greater than than cap n. Okay, so uh, a note that um, just purely, um, you know, probability, the probability we're greater than epsilon, the probability we're less than or equal to epsilon, that's one. That's the entire sample space. So if xn converges in probability, that means this goes to zero, then it means this converges to one. So they're equivalent definitions. And um, so, and, and also note that, you know, here, there's no equal sign here there is and um, 
it, it, it's noted that if it does converge in probability, that, that's x in conversion probability to x, um, for all epsilon, then surely we can just, you know, stick the equal sign under it and it also converges uh, in probability to zero. So the uh, third type of convergence, it's gonna, we're going to call it convergence and distribution. And we write it xn con, you know, converges to x. We put a little d above it, which means converges and distribution. And that means that the, uh, the uh, CDF of, of these random variables converges to the CDF of x. So this is, and this is for all x, uh, you know, a real number, where f is continuous. Okay, thus, the, uh, eps, for, for all epsilon greater than zero, and for all x where f is continuous, there exists an n, which is a, can be a function of epsilon and x, such that this difference is less than epsilon, and this is for all n greater than cap n. So this is the definition of convergence and distribution. Okay, couple notes. This is also known as weak convergence. Um, now here's a subtlety, and I'll give an example of this in. Um, I guess it'll be the fourth video. If f n have PDFs, little f n, and then uh, x n converges in distribution to x. This does not necessarily imply that the PDFs converge, that um, that f of n converges to, I'm going to say cap f, or to any PDF. And so we'll give an example of that. Uh, although there are some conditions that you can, uh, you know, implement or assume true or make true on these PDFs, that we could say that they do converge. If it converges in distribution, it converges in the PDF. But in general, that's not the case. Okay. Uh, the next uh, convergence that we're going to do is, and, and the last one for this mini series, is convergence in quadratic mean. So we're going to assume that we have a finite second moment. And then I have a video that shows that if we assume the second moment's finite, that also assumes lower moments are finite, so the mean is finite. And we write it as xn converges to uh, x in quadratic mean. You put a q and an m there. And that's if this difference um, goes to zero. Then, it can, then xn converges in quadratic mean to x. So this is thus, every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n which can be a function of the epsilon chosen greater than zero, such that the expected value of this uh, difference squared is less than epsilon. And this has to be true for all n greater than cap n. Okay. So um, in the next video, we're going to show that, uh, maybe the next two videos, that convergence almost surely implies convergence and probability which implies convergence and distribution. But it's also this way. Convergence in quadratic mean implies quadrat uh, convergence and probability, which also implies uh, convergence and distribution. Well, that's all I have uh, for this video for the definitions. Uh, next video we, or two, we'll, we'll prove these relationships. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.